Welcome to yet another episode of Ecoville. I'm your host, Nonsigele Lokwaka. Today on the show, we are joined by Fatna Ikram Elfane from Morocco. She is the co-founder of Youth for Climate Morocco, and she's also a climate activist. She is currently studying towards a master's degree in environmental engineering. She joins us to discuss the impact of climate change on water resources in North Africa, which has the world's most water scarce regions with a high dependency on climate sensitive agriculture. Welcome to the program, Fatna, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure for me to be with you today. All right. So uh, our first question to you is, uh, can you tell us about your organization and the work that you do? Okay, sure. So uh, our NGO, uh, Youth for Climate Morocco, uh, was uh, established in uh, 2000 in April 2021. So uh, it's been a, a year now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole idea, actually, of uh, this uh, organization uh, came up in the period of like uh, in uh, the period of the pandemic. So we, a group of uh, y- young people from different fields who care actually about environment, decided to uh, create this organization to raise awareness. Uh, in our uh, community. So uh, Youth for Climate work with the communities to increase uh, awareness of climate change and environmental issues and also uh, conservation methods uh, and uh, to offer it to young people uh, to implement their initiatives. We, we establish a lot of uh, programs uh, on uh, about uh, climate change and environmental mm-hmm. issues. And we try to uh, like... I can say not teach, but give the tools and give more information to young people to understand better the current situation of our environment so that they can actually take the action. Okay, it's nice to know the the aims and the drives of your organization. So over the last 10 years, how have some water sources in your region been affected by climate change? Uh, well, uh, let me tell you that uh, there are actually other factors that have uh, uh, exacerb- exacerbated the, the water situation besides climate change, mm-hmm. uh, such as uh, unreasonable human usage uh, of water resources. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the past 10 years, actually, Morocco has moved from the stage of water scarcity to a situation of extreme water stress. And Mm -hmm. uh, research shown that Morocco will lose actually 30% uh, of its water resources annually by 2050. Now, uh, the current state of water resources is on average uh, of uh, 150 billion cubic meters of precipitation, Mm -hmm. uh, while 120 billion cubic meters of which evaporate. So the global annual uh, consumption of uh, water is 1,000 cubic meters per person. But in Morocco, the annual consumption uh, does not exceed the 600 cubic meters per person. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's actually uh, a huge difference. Uh, although the past four years, uh, the filling rates of them uh, in Morocco has decreased from like 62% in 2018 to mm-hmm. 127 uh, in this year, in 2021. Mm-hmm. So uh, the current situation of uh, water resources in Morocco is actually... Uh, change the law and it's becoming more serious and that's why we need to to take this in in a serious way Mm -hmm. so um if from what you said with such disturbing statistics uh what's being done to make sure that uh, people at the end of the day have enough water for their usage are there any plans are there any programs that are focused on that yeah so uh, actually morocco uh, like the current situation we can say it's established uh we're not actually in in um we can say it's not in a really bad situation like we still have enough water to use but here we're talking about the future actually we're talking about the, the next 10 years this the situation will be like worse so that's why the moroccan government actually taking this in consideration by per, by establishing like uh, uh, some plans some uh, like uh, policy uh, policies and uh, to actually um, like prevent the worst scenarios as we can say mm-hmm so, so also more. the NGOs, yeah, yes, also the NGOs, uh, yeah, taken this in consideration by like, uh, uh, as I said, they try to uh, like uh, 
telling people or uh, like uh, helping the government in the, uh, in their side. So uh, they are actually in the, like, they interact with the government. So they mm. uh, their t- their job actually is to uh, like um, raise awareness, uh, especially in uh, in uh, especially with the in young in the uh, youth side. So because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I see that uh, young people are the future, so they should actually know better the current situation and the, the problems that our uh, our earth actually is facing. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the. Pro- we I have now a better appreciation of um, what your government and uh, the NGOs in your country are doing. But uh, as mm-hmm. as we move from uh, your country, like specific as in Morocco, we mm-hmm. go into uh, the North Africa region, which also has like um, worrying st- statistics. Because in recent studies, for uh, recent studies actually focus that the now rivers flow will decrease by 40 to 60 percent which will increase frequency and intensity of drought particularly in north african countries causing major socio-economic and political problems for the region uh how true is this statement and give us examples of how this will affect people in their day-to-day lives well, uh, we know that in addition to uh, Egypt, uh, the Nile actually runs uh, through uh, or along uh, the boards of 10 other African countries, right? Namely, uh, South Sudan, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, Ethiopia. So uh, mm-hmm. for years, uh, the river actually has provided a source of irrigation to transform the dry area uh, around it into lush uh, agricultural land. Now, indeed, uh, water management in the Nile River, uh, it's not just uh, about water. It's, it is actually about uh, management growth uh, and uh, recognizing uh, um, uh, the different uh, economic uh, plans uh, and their political ambitions. So, uh, in other words, actually, I can say it's it's about politics, uh, and uh, it's uh, rose defin- and It is in the road definition of who gets what. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, in recent years, uh, the politics of water sharing and uh, its uh, related uh, diplomatic framework have become actually less predictable. Mm-hmm. So, however, n- no day uh, tensions are increasing due to the population growth and poverty, uh, degrad- de- degradation of uh, the economic, uh, of the ecosystem and the water mm-hmm. scarcity that uh, characterize the, the region. And in the past, uh, the tensions uh, derived uh, from uh, the dominance and uh, constant uh, threat of uh, military use uh, from the side of Egypt, uh, the civil war in uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, and uh, the negligible uh, use of water by uh, upstream uh, riparian states. Now, recently, the this, uh, discrep- uh, discrepancies uh, have uh, risen actually in the region due to the constant uh, dominance of of Egypt over the water uh, of the river. So, uh, and the, the treaties under which the country actually supports its power over it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so the now is uh, more affected by politics uh, rather yes. than climate change in itself. Yeah, it's actually about politics. I... All right. So, um, we are now understand that uh, the politics around the Nile, but I would want to know how will climate change in itself affect the agricultural sector since in your region, since there is high dependency on climate sensitive agriculture? Well, uh, we know that uh, it's like climate change is actually uh, one of the major risks facing development countries, specific in, in Africa, like uh, for which agriculture is a predominant part in the economy of it, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's actually estimated that Africa will be the most uh, vulnerable uh, to climate change globally due to the multiple stress of poor uh, infra- uh, uh, infrastructures and uh, mm-hmm. the temperatures uh, are likely to increase by between 1.5 to probably 4 uh, degrees in this century, by the end of this century. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, in Morocco, 
the future climate tra uh, trends include actually raising temperatures of 1 to uh, 1.5 by 2015 mm -hmm. and uh, degrees in average precipitation by, uh, I can say, 10 to 20% uh, across the country. So uh, this actually would lead to an increase uh, in growth, which uh, would uh, impact the agricultural sector for sure. So uh, this, uh, this in turn will uh, also impact the Moroccan economy, since the agriculture and agribusiness activities in Morocco actually generate over 30% of employment. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, currently, the government has actually is, uh, is, uh, carrying out important monitoring and crop uh, assurance uh, programs to maintain the agriculture sector. And since uh, 2008, uh, the government uh, launched the Green Morocco Plan uh, mm -hmm. to make uh, the agriculture sector uh, the main engine of, uh, of growth in Morocco. Okay. Um, so, and then in terms of if the agricultural sector is affected, because I like to give um, the listeners a picture of how does it affect the ordinary person? What do you think will be, will be the repercussions if uh, then there is the, the agricultural sector is, is affected, then you have people losing their jobs, eh? And then you also have people uh, failing maybe to get enough food Yes, for sure. We know that agriculture actually is, uh, is uh, uh, like uh, the, the, in the most important uh, sector in, in all the world, and like uh, even in development countries, mm -hmm. in developed countries, actually. So because it's provide us food and uh, uh, like uh, it's the reason actually we survive. So mm -hmm. uh, if without agriculture, I don't think it will actually be um, uh, and, like hunger. And for sure, it will be war, and uh, like in, in the in the world. So uh, that's why, uh, like, I think that the, not only Morocco but all the specific the African countries should actually uh, focus on this sector, trying mm. to uh, like find solution uh, mm. because we have like now two problems uh, related to each other. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the water scarcity that we currently face. And it's actually related to agriculture and not only to agriculture, to other sector for sure, but it's important actually for agriculture. So we should try to focus uh, our programs, our actually strategies on how to uh, maintain the, the, the water resources so mm -hmm. that we can actually, we cannot actually uh, face uh, other problems mm -hmm. like hunger and uh, wars, as I said. Mm -hmm. So, so since um, I heard you talk about uh, the Moroccan government uh, putting in programs that are there to actually reduce the effects of, of climate change. Now, um, I would want to ask you about the Middle East and North Africa Climate Week was recently held in Dubai, which is part of uh, the measures that are there for, for countries in the region to come together and talk about how uh, climate change is affecting them. So please, can you tell us about this conference and its aims? What is it about? Yeah, yeah so the, the Middle East and North Africa Climate Week, uh, week was actually held in March. Uh, and it is a part of uh, the 2022 Regional Climate Week series, which includes meeting in uh, different regions of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the international conference discussed uh, uh, Sterno's international efforts to address the phenomenon uh, of climate change, uh, also discussed the, the consequences of the crisis uh, and the proposed urgent and the effective solution to it uh, within the, the international agenda that came in the uh, COP26 conference. Uh, also during the conference, um, the, Germany, the German Ministry of Economy and Environmental Protection uh, presented uh, a session on promoting the hydrogen economy uh, through international partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the International Renewable uh, Energy Agency uh, uh, focused in, uh, in its session on the role of renewable energy and in uh, uh, simulating, uh, simulating uh, climate action to achieve uh, carbon neutrality uh, by 2050 in the, in the Middle East and the North Africa region. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, yeah, also uh, the World Bank uh, reviewed 
the mechanisms uh, for uh, integrating climate actions uh, across uh, uh, pivotal uh, economic sector in the national planning. Uh, mm -hmm. While uh, the United Nations Development Program uh, with the partner organizations uh, had led a session on uh, adapting to climate risks and uh, building uh, resilience uh, within development strategies. Mm -hmm. that so, was, yeah, that was the main uh, thing that I have uh, uh, the conference I've actually discussed. Right. Yeah, you've already told us about the outcomes. But from all the outcomes you've told us, do you think it's fees they are feasible, one? And two, do you think uh, countries in those regions will be able to implement them? Yeah, actually, uh, well, uh, I can say there is some line outcomes from the conference uh, where uh, the support of activities that decrease carbon emission while also decreasing air pollution, uh, as well as uh, particular pro promises to reduce emissions of uh, short-lived uh, climate fluent in uh, their uh, regionally specified commitment. And I found this actually really important uh, and uh, hope that the countries and the governments actually take this uh, in a serious way and uh, make it actually um, happen and also with uh, identifying the, the reducing obstacles uh, uh, to health uh, related uh, to climate change adaptation and investment uh, with uh, a focus on durable health systems and climate smart uh, healthcare facilities okay uh, so uh, just talking about conferences in general i mean there are so many conferences in the world yeah, of course. Where, where people come together they talk about climate change they talk about the things that need to be done in order to reduce the the effects but asking uh, your own personal opinion do you think climate conferences really contribute to policy change uh, yes, actually, uh, I do. Uh, even though the, uh, some experts uh, believe that the climate conference uh, will not achieve actually the, their goal of, of obtaining uh, commitments from countries to reduce global uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions by, uh, by 2030. Uh, however, uh, this international conference is actually and events continue to be essential, essential in uh, contributing, uh, contributing to change. So um, I think that they are actually uh, really important to like to, to contribute to policy change because, uh, like uh, the the government, the, like the government and uh, the politics uh, people, actually they they are the change maker. I can say like they have the. Uh, the power to do a lot of changes, actually. So uh, it's actually important. Okay, I understand the, the importance. And then I want to go back to your, your country, like Morocco. Do you think Moroccans have a, a general understanding or appreciation of the effects of, of, of climate change and how that can affect their lives? Well, if we're talking about Morocco as a country, uh, yeah. it does actually uh, understand the, uh, like the current situation. So since the Earth uh, Summit that was held in Rio in, uh, in 1992, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Morocco actually has shown a great commitment to support uh, its transition uh, to sustainable uh, uh, development. Uh, also, Morocco uh, employ, uh, employs a multi-sectoral approach to back the effects of climate change, uh, including mm -hmm. efforts of government ministries, uh, policy makers, uh, environment, uh, universities, I'm sorry, and the NGOs uh, to enact management strategies and encourage public awareness on the importance of environmental uh, conservation. Uh, although uh, Morocco uh, was one of the first countries actually to uh, develop uh, a climate change strategy and action plan with its uh, national plan against global warming in 2009. Uh, and uh, today, the policy on climate change of Morocco that uh, has been developed in 2014, uh, it, it is the main policy document which supports uh, the application of uh, Morocco's vision uh, uh, in terms of climate change. 
Uh, so uh, this is like uh, we're talking about the the government side, uh, mm -hmm. but if we're talking about the um, the people, mm -hmm. uh, I think actually uh, after the pandemic, uh, people began to recognize the the importance of the environment, mm -hmm. and uh, were more and they were more familiar uh, with the environmental uh, concerns that we face today. Uh, now in Morocco. Uh, I can say that the majority of youth uh, are began more aware of the, the current situation and beginning to take action, which is actually a good thing, uh, considering that youth present up to uh, 40% of the population, uh, not only in Morocco, but in the majority of countries. So it is actually important that the youth understand climate concerns uh, because they are the future and they have mm -hmm. the ability to make a significant difference. So, which I hope all of us we can do it. Right. It's 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 good to hear that the the youth are actually active participants eh, in all these yes. programs. And so, lastly, what do you hope your organization will achieve in ten years' time? Well, um, actually, I have a lot of hopes. Uh, in ten years, I really hope to advance in our role uh, as much as possible. Uh, uh, to raise awareness, uh, to let people really uh, understand and uh, not only uh, by talking, but by taking action. So it's clearly that the Mother Earth is sending us an urgent call to action. So uh, we have actually to remind ourselves uh, about the serious situation that we are in and hope that we can be part of the change uh, as I said, by raising awareness and serving our community and our planet. So that's what we hope to do. And hopefully that in 10 years, in the, in the next 10 years, the situation actually changed to better uh, by us. Like, um, yeah, that's, that's what I hope, actually. <laughs> those are, that's that's great and i hope all those hopes and dreams they do come true because they actually benefit everyone as uh, yes. yes as 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 active activism is what um the environment needs and more people to be educated on how to conserve our environment so thank you fatna for joining us thank you to you it's a pleasure actually it was a pleasure for me to be with you today thank you and we also hope that you continue with your work around uh, climate uh, activism. Yes, uh, for, sure, for sure I will. And I really hope that I will be part of the change, even if it will be a little. <laughs> we, all need, we all need to put in the effort. So if, if everyone puts, puts in the work, then we will fight this as... Exactly. As, as, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We should actually start the action like uh, we, we talk a lot actually so now it's uh, time to take action uh, we can start from ourselves and uh, impact the other people around us and this actually will will do a lot of uh, changes actually that's good uh, so thank you again to all our listeners please don't forget to subscribe like and follow us on our social media pages our handle is equalville zw on all platforms join us next week for another episode i'm your host Nonsigele Logwaka.